is so good. You have to make this. This is my Pixa Stone I got on Amazon for just a few bucks. Very affordable, makes a huge difference in your Pixa game, and after a while, it'll look nice and charred, just like mine. To start, we're gonna need six cups of all-purpose flour. You can use bread flour as well, gives a nice texture, but all-purpose flour is readily available to most people, so I thought I'd use this for the recipe. As we start to mix our wet and dry ingredients, you'll soon find out that it's a lot easier to add dry to the wet versus wet to the dry. So we'll wanna make sure we add it in little by little. We're gonna need two cups of water. To that, we'll be adding two tablespoons of active dry yeast. Go ahead and mix that around. Now, typically you're gonna to hear to stir this and let it set for about 15 minutes. You really don't have to if you know it's active and alive. It's really more so to kind of give it a test to make sure that it's not dead. But if you know yours is good, you can just roll right into the next step. To that, we're adding two teaspoons of sugar. We're gonna transfer the wet ingredients into a mixing bowl. Now we'll slowly start to add in our flour, little by little. After you've got about half in there, you can go ahead and start to mix and incorporate it. Once that's well incorporated, we can go ahead and start to slowly mix in the rest of that flour. One cup at a time. Once we've got a shaggy dough just like this, we're gonna go ahead and add in our salt and then get it on the stand mixer. Go ahead and start by mixing this dough on medium. Our dough's nearly done. It's been on the stand mixer for about four minutes, but at this point, I'm just gonna dump it onto the counter here and finish it off by hand. Give it a nice gentle massage. Go ahead and press it into itself. If this is your first time making dough and it doesn't look like this, or maybe you're a little frustrated, it really helps to give it a nice punch. And there it is. With less than 10 minutes of total knead time, you got yourself a nice dough bowl. All you've got to do at this point is let this rest until it's doubled in size. Go ahead and add some oil to a bigger bowl here. This is just going to make sure that the dough bowl doesn't stick too bad to the bowl. Go in upside down. Flip and cover with a damp towel or plastic wrap. If left at room temperature, this is gonna rise a lot faster. If you want it to develop flavor, you can give it a cold ferment for one to two days in the fridge. For the sauce, we're gonna be using San Marzano tomatoes. Absolutely delicious and highly recommend. Really, any tomatoes are gonna to work just fine, but I feel like these add a really good flavor. We're gonna go ahead and transfer these over. You're gonna to wanna to add salt to taste. Go in with some oregano. We're gonna go ahead and blend that together. This is perfect for pizzas you're trying to make really quick. Another thing I really like to do with my tomatoes is once I've crushed or blended them is I like to reduce them over the stove on a low heat. It brings a lot of flavor out of it. But something as simple as this is really gonna go a long way. You wanna preheat your oven to 500 degrees with the pizza stone inside so that it gets nice and hot on the bottom, helping you develop that really crispy crust. This is dough I made a day ago and it's been sitting in the fridge in a cold ferment. And you'll notice that when you do this, the dough is a lot easier to work with. So whether it's stretching, whether it's shaping into a bigger piece, it's a lot easier when the dough has been sitting for quite some time. Same thing when you're working with a dough you've made the same day. If it's not really cooperating and it's bringing back a little too much, you need to give it a little bit of time for that gluten to relax. So whether that's covering it for 10 to 20 minutes or making it a whole day in advance, it really goes a long way. Let's shape one of these out. Have some flour on your surface, get the dough ball down. Just start pressing with your fingers right along the middle, leaving a little extra around the edges for the crust. You're gonna wanna flip it around, do the same thing. We're gonna go down with some sauce.
Now we're gonna pop this right on top of that pizza stone for seven to 10 minutes, flipping halfway through. It's nice and crispy on the edges and soft and chewy on the inside. The flavor developed in this dough after resting for so long, paired with the fresh taste of the San Marzano tomatoes, this is really, really good, and I really hope you make it because I think you're gonna love it. So hot. You're still here? Go make pizza, come on, make it.